<sighs> oh. As a newbie bag maker, I found the whole interfacing and stabiliser thing rather confusing. Which is which? Peltex? Decaville? Stiff stuff? It was like a foreign language. There are many different types and brands of interfacings and stabilizers on the market. In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite ones. G'day, it's Christine Welsh here from Chris W Designs and I'm here to help sewists just like you to make bags and wallets that look so professional nobody will believe you made them yourself. Today I want to share with you my favourite interfacings and stabiliser products which I personally use in my bags and wallets. Without interfacings and stabilisers your bags will be very flimsy indeed and won't be very durable either. Bags without any interfacing and stabilisers is simply not a good look. Trust me, you don't want to skimp on these things as they are the very foundations of your bags and it's what gives the bags their structure and form. There are other brands out there than those that I will show you in this video and indeed some of these may not be available in your country. So I have created a handy guide listing substitutes and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Oh and for all you fellow Aussies out there you can find all my favourite products in my Aussie Bag Making Supplies website. Shameless plug. I'll pop that link in the description below too. Firstly we'll take a look at my most used product, Fusible Woven Interfacing. Now the reason I choose a woven interfacing as opposed to a non-woven one is because with woven interfacings your fabric will retain its fluidity and the interfacing kind of just adds a nice extra layer of strength to your fabric, allowing your fabric to flow and behave similar to the way it does without it. The non-woven interfacing tends to make the fabric stiff and papery and it gives it a cheap look and feel. Yep. The woven interfacing that I use is fusible. You can tell which side is the glue side because it feels rough to touch. And in some cases some, some interfacings will be shiny on the glue side. You can also use sew-in interfacings and in some cases I do prefer a sew-in and when I use a sew-in I simply base the outer edges of the fabric and interfacing together. One of the most common woven interfacings used in bag making is Pellon Shape Flex SF101. You'll often see it in the supplies list called either Shape Flex or SF101 but either name refers to the same one. Up until recently the Shape Flex was my favourite interfacing and I used it in all my bags and wallets. However it is rather pricey so when I was introduced to Woven Fuse I fell in love with it and I'll pop a link in the description below so you know where to find it. But um, not only does it fuse really easy and it has less wrinkles and bubbles than the Shape Flex but possibly the best part is the fact that it is so much more cost effective. The Shape Flex is only 50 centimeters or 20 inches wide, whereas the Woven Fuse is 114 centimeters or 45 inches wide. So remember this when you are comparing the costs per meter or yard, because unless you can get the Shape Flex at a super sale price, the Woven Fuse does work out much cheaper. And it also comes in a black too. And I like to use the black on, obviously on dark black fabrics or any dark navies or dark fabrics. I almost always add woven fuse to all my fabric pieces however there's some exceptions and that's when I'm trying to keep thicknesses down such as when I'm making my wallets like the Penny Inn. Um, it gets really thick if you put it onto everything and then it's just practically impossible to sew and it gets really bulky and it doesn't look good. If you are on a budget you can save a little by using one of the non-woven interfacings in the pockets and even in the lining if pennies are really tight. However, please don't skimp on the exterior or highly visible parts of your bag. Oh, and no, you do not need to add shape flex or woven fuse to vinyl, leather or cork. Apart from interfacing your bag, you will need to add something which will give it some support and shape. Soft and stable, a foam stabiliser, is my favourite for bags where I want them to have a lot of structure and be able to stand up on their own. 
It's a sew-in product, although you can get fusible foam, and there are a few different brands out there, but I find the Soft and Stable is the most durable and supportive of all the foams. Now if you don't like the fact that it's a sew-in product, another option is using a fusible web such as Pelin Wonder Under 805 in combination with the Soft and Stable. Your headliner foam is another option if you're on a budget and cannot find the sewing branded foams. It's sold at Auto Upholsterers. It's used in the roof lining of cars. I find it isn't quite as thick or supportive as the Soft and Stable, so if a lot of structure is important to you, choose the Soft and Stable. It's a little bit thicker than the headliner and it feels more substantial. And you can see that that wrinkles and is very light. Holds its shape much better. Now to attach your fabric to your Soft and Stable, I'm using a zigzag stitch. You can just use a straight stitch if you don't have zigzag. Just do it about three mils, one eighth of an inch from the edge. And stitch all the way around there. Now because foams are bulky, if you don't do anything to the foam once you've sewn your seams, you'll find that your bags won't look good in the area of the seams and it will just look really unprofessional. I recommend you either trim your foam out of your seam allowance with a pair of duckbill or pointy scissors or an easier way which works really well and makes your bag super strong is to zigzag your foam in the seam allowances to flatten it. If you don't have zigzag you can just run a few rows of straight stitch and that will do the trick as well. Another of my favourites is fusible fleece. Again, there are several different brands and weights available, but I mostly use either Thermaland Plus, which is this one, or Violene H640. Now, I use the fleece where I want my bags to be less structured, such as in a slouchy bag, like my snazzy, 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 slouch, I can't say it, snazzy slouch. I use it where I want my bags to be less structured, such as in a slouchy bag, my, like my snazzy slouch. I can't say it. <laughs> I've tried about 15 times already. I give up my snazzy slouch. Or in smaller projects, such as pouches or clutches, where a foam would be too bulky and would not look good or feel good. Fleece is also available in a sew-in. However, I rarely use that because I always trim the seam allowances off my fleece to reduce the bulk in the seams. Peltex 71. Peltex comes in both double-sided and single-sided fusible and non-fusible. And while I mostly use the single-sided fusible, occasionally I will use it without fusing. And to save myself having to buy both types, I will either fuse some interfacing onto the glue side of the Peltex and you can tell which is the glue side because you can feel it, it's rough. Or I'll remove the glue by ironing some paper onto the glue side and removing it quickly before it has a chance to stick. Peltex is very stiff and I use it mostly for bases in my bags or in areas where I want extra stiffness, such as the top of my Epiphany or cocoa bag. You can also use it in wallets and clutches too, but one thing I don't like about the Peltex is its wrinkle factor. Just like my wrinkly face, once it's wrinkled there's little you can do to permanently remove those wrinkles and while ironing helps for a little while, the wrinkles just seem to return. So this is why I prefer the Decaville 1, which is this one. Decaville 1 is fusible, Decaville or Decaville, I sometimes call it Decaville, other times I call it Decaville. You can see how that just bends and flows but it doesn't really wrinkle, kind of like a wave, unlike this which is just wrinkly, I don't know if that's being picked up in the video very well. Um, there are two versions of the Decaville, the Decaville one is the heavier one of the two and the one I use in all of my wallets and then there's Decaville light and this is the Decaville light and you can see it's much more flimsy than the Decaville one. 
and I like the way this is much more substantial in my wallets than this one. I find it's just a bit too flimsy and I like the way that this Decaville one gives the wallets a really professional feel to them. Now the, both Decavilles are fusible. Now with both the Decavilles the fusible side is the shiny side. In the US it's been a bit difficult to source however more recently you can get it from Barbara along with your woven fuse. Quite bendy and pliable and just does not wrinkle like the Peltex does. Personally I love this stuff especially for wallets. Stiff stuff. Stiff stuff? <laughs> The stiff stuff is non-fusible, yet it's firm and flexible, and in some ways it's very similar to the Peltex, yet in the best possible way it's different. It does not tend to wrinkle and crease like Peltex does. You can crumple it and squish it and your bag will bounce back, looking as good as new. I used it in my Chloe's Court clutch and I fell in love with it. See with the Peltex, if you squish that, you can see that it's, it just looks terrible, it's all wrinkly. And that's what happens if you've got that fused to your fabric and then you get it wrinkled it wrinkles the fabric right along with it that's another reason why I like this as a non fusible one I slip it into place and then if it does happen to wrinkle a bit it's not gonna keep your fabric wrinkled because they're not fused together if I didn't love the Decaville one so much I would use the stiff stuff in my wallets that would be my second choice so there you have the rundown on my favourite interfacings and stabilisers for bag making. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you're new here, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that bell to be notified of any new bag making videos coming up. Let me know in the comments below which is your favourite Wow, I'm glad I found this interfacing or stabiliser that you use when making bags. Catch you later!